Hello people, welcome to this uh, lesson that is going to be about sentence analysis and we have been dealing with sentence, syntax analysis um, in a way and I haven't introduced it formally but for example if you remember we have been talking about type of words okay and we have been in a way marking this different or highlighting these different words with different um, categories or different um, colors okay so in a way this is syntax analysis this is one part of syntax syntax analysis okay and we have also been dealing with phrases and clauses okay so we know what a noun phrase is and we know what a clause is. So having dealt with these topics, we can go to our lesson today, that is sentence analysis. So the first thing you have to know is that sentence analysis is not useless. Okay, it is very important for your writing. And this is prácticas discursivas de la comunicación académica escrita. So, what you have to know is that sentence analysis uh, gives you um, the opportunity to uh, realize how you write, okay? How you organize your sentences and how these sentences create paragraphs and how these paragraphs create texts. Okay, so be very aware of this and please pay attention. So the first thing you have to know or the second thing you have to know about sentence analysis is that there are two different levels of analysis. The first level is the functional analysis or the functional level. And the second is the categorical analysis. Okay, so what do we do in the functional analysis? In the functional analysis, we have to uh, identify the role, okay? The role of the words, the role. It's very important for you. That is to say, well, these words or this word is a subject, it's a predicate. Is it a modifier that can be a pre-modifier or post-modifier? a head, an object, okay, and so on. Can you understand? These are functions. And then, as regards categorical analysis, this is connected with categories, okay? Categories. And categories are the kind of type of words, okay? The video we have seen, so, for example, you have to identify whether a word is a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, an article, a noun phrase, etc. Okay? So, once we have learned this, once we have um, studied different type of words, we need to identify or be aware that there are different structure of sentences, okay? For example, if you come across with this sentence that says, Mary ate an apple, okay? Mary ate an apple. This is a simple sentence, okay? And this sentence can be called an independent sentence because this sentence doesn't depend on any other. Okay? It stands on its own. And then you can use a connector, also called a discourse maker, and to join two simple sentences or two independent sentences. And you see, you can say Mary ate an apple and Peter ate an orange. Okay, so Mary ate an apple 
it's a simple or independent sentence and pizza ate an orange it's another independent sentence okay both sentences can be joined together by a coordinator okay or this course maker then we are going to see a classification of these course makers then there is another type of um, sentence okay or clauses as you wish this complex sentence is very related or closely related to what we have seen remember in this debate uh, oh, sorry it was okay it was in this one remember i told you to uh, write the independent and the dependent part and you said independent clause dependent clause okay well so this is a complex sentence and complex sentences are introduced okay by a subordinating conjunction okay that is different, they are similar, but they are different from coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are not the same as subordinating conjunctions. Okay? So, I hope it is clear for you now. Remember that we are going to deal with um, conjunctions now. Um, for this coordinating conjunctions we are going to study this let's say this rule that is called fan boys rule okay fans bo boys stands for for and nor but or yet so okay and then we have the subordinate conjunctions as i told you that introduce an incomplete sort Although, when, if, because, why, however, whereas, etc. Okay? Most of these, okay, introduce an incomplete sort. It means that if you have this um, sentence, let's say, or clause, uh, the idea is incomplete that you cannot understand what he says for example if you choose because and you said um, because I like it doesn't have sense for you because you need something more more information about because you because I like what do you like okay so these are conjunctions remember you have to know about them and to study them Remember that we had the categorical analysis, as I told you, okay? This categorical analysis also include verbs, okay? There are three different types of verbs. Verbs can be transitive, detransitive, or intransitive, okay? So, let's see examples. Examples of transitive verbs are those who have or are followed by a direct object. For example, Mary ate an apple. Mary ate an apple. What did she eat? Sorry, what did she eat? She ate an apple. Okay? So, this verb, if you can answer this question, what? What did she eat? Uh, it's a transitive verb. And the transitive verbs, these ones, okay, um, are the ones who have a direct object and indirect object, okay? Um, sorry, uh, mainly with the verb give, just in this case. For example, Mary gave Peter a book. Okay, gave it's a detransitive verb because Mary gave Peter, it's the person who receives the object in this case, and that would be an indirect object. Okay, and the thing, the actual object that is given, it's the book 
so the book would be a direct object okay so pizza is the indirect object a book could be the direct object remember that gave or give has another structure you can also say mary gave a book to pizza okay that would be totally different but to pizza would also be the indirect object okay and then you have the intransitive verbs the intransitive verbs are those verbs that do not have any object but they are followed by a subjective complement okay subjective complement remember that a subjective sorry that subjective complement sorry um it's how to complement or what characteristics has a subject okay so intransitive verbs are usually the to be verbs okay the verb to be for example peter is a lucky man okay peter is a lucky man is is an intransitive verb okay and it is an incomplete verb why is it a complete sorry incomplete predication because if you say if you erase this and you say peter is there is something missing okay but if you say mary ate okay you understand the meaning you understand what she ate something but you know that she ate but if you say Peter is, that's incomplete. Okay? So, intransitive verbs are incomplete. Good? And they tell you a compliment about the subject. In this case, the subject is Peter. What do we know about Peter? Peter, it's a lucky man. Okay? So, we are going to stop here. Remember, there are two different kind of analysis or two levels of analysis, the functional one and the categorial one. Okay? And then you have different type of sentences. The simple one, the compound, the complex. Okay? And these two can be formed thanks to the conjunctions that can be subordinating conjunctions or sorry this one subordinating conjunctions or coordinating conjunctions okay and it is very important for you to remember that verbs can be transitive detransitive and intransitive okay so we're going to stop there and we are going to have another video um, teaching you more um, important concepts of syntax analysis. Okay? Well, any question you have, uh, remember we are going to open or to create a forum uh, for your queries. Okay. Bye-bye.